Trying to be morally good. See your, uh, let's say your children. You are good to them as far as you know how to be. Are you good to them because of morality? Because somebody has told you you should not kill your children. Is that the reason why you are not killing them? Are you? being good to your children and not killing them because somebody has told you that you must be good to your children, that is good morals. Is it so? So why are you so good to them? Why do you love them? Why not somebody else? Hmm? Why are they your children? Because in some way you see them as a part of yourself, isn't it? <coughs> in some way you see them as a part of yourself. Though they grow up and turn your enemies sometimes, <laughs> still somewhere, as far as you are concerned, you see them as a part of yourself, that you are able to look beyond all their nonsense, all their problems, all their everything and still reach out to them, isn't it? simply because you see them as a part of yourself. Yes, that's all the thing is, isn't it? So anything that you experience as a part of yourself, with that you don't need morality, obviously. Isn't it so? Yes? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because you just leave out one step and when we go there again, you go back to the number one step. <laughs> So anything that you experience as a part of yourself, with that you do not need any morality. Is it so? Yes. You don't have to try to be good. Morality means you're trying to be good, isn't it? <clears throat> so yoga means to experience everything as a part of yourself. Right now, let's say you gave birth to a child. It could have happened to many of you, you don't know. And in the hospital, they interchange your children with somebody else. You bring this child, this was born biologically to somebody else, but you believe this is yours. And uh, you love this child any less? Your involvement with the child any less? Your DNA not there? But still, you love it, so it is just your willingness to include somebody who you are capable. It is not that it has to come from your body, it is just that if you are willing, it's possible, isn't it? If you are a little more sensible, maybe you adopted a child and love this child as much as anybody. Why you did not bear your wife or your husband, do you? They were born by somebody else. And generally your husbands were born by that horrible woman called mother-in-law. But you love that man, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it so? So it is just a question of your willingness. If you are willing, you can experience everything as a part of yourself. When you experience everything as a part of yourself, you do not need morality. When you know the vulgarity, of what is you and what is not you, only then you need morality. Otherwise, no morality. Why does a person who experiences everybody as himself need morality? With morals, you are only trying to be good. You will never become good. Please see this. You can hold back your hands, but you can't hold back your mind, isn't it? Can you? You can hold back your physical body, can you hold back your mind? It goes everywhere and does everything, isn't it? You okay for a joke? <laughs> hmm? yes. Any kind? Yes. In his previous life, Shankar Pillai was a very good man. 
after a brief illness, he died. Being a good man, naturally he went to heaven. When he went to heaven, the angels, the reception committee welcomed him <coughs> and then they opened his account book. You know, they keep accounts of everything, you know that. They turn pages, good deed, good deed, good deed, good deed, good deed. Cover to cover, only good deeds. Then there was little confusion among the angels. Then they came to Shankarapala and said, Mr. Pillai, there's a little problem. Shankarapala said, what is the problem? They said, see, we have various types of accommodation in heaven. One bad deed, highest level of heaven, see front view, two bad deeds, next level, three bad deeds, next level. Like this, there are many levels of heaven. But no bad deed, there is no such accommodation here. Till now, we have never received a man like you without a single bad deed. So we don't know what to do with you. Shankar and Pillai said, what nonsense. I was such a good man in the world, nobody wanted to come anywhere near me. <laughs> I just lived with the hope of going to heaven. Even here a problem? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this? Always I was told, being a good man, I can go to heaven. And then I do a good job of it, you have a problem. Then the angels met among themselves, had a discussion and they said, Don't you worry, Mr. Pillai, we have found a solution. We are giving you three hours extra life. Your body is still intact anyway. You go back, just commit one bad deed. We'll put you in the highest heaven, nothing lost. And lo, he became alive here. He sat up once again. He sat here thinking how to commit a bad deed. See, there's no practice, not like you, you know. <laughs> You've never committed one. So he sat there thinking, thinking, thinking. One and a half hours passed away. Then he suddenly realized, there is a woman well past her prime in the neighborhood, who's been casting inviting glances at him. He being a good man, he never looked that way. Now he thought, okay, adultery is a bad deed. So he went. He went to that lady's house and knocked on the door. She came and opened the door. Shankar and Pillai said, I want you. Why, Mr. Pillai, they told me just yesterday evening that you are on your deathbed. What is this? He said, it doesn't matter, I want you. He went in. Whatever he lacked in practice, he made it up with his enthusiasm to go to heaven. Nature took over, things happened. Now, he looked at his time, the watch is ticking away. He doesn't want to die in her house. He wants to go back home and die. So, he is living in a hurry. He said, I need to go, I need to go. And he came to the door. The lady also came to see him off. As he was leaving, the woman said, Mr. Pillai, do you know what a good deed you have done for me today? <laughs> One more good deed. <laughs> if you are too good, you will neither make it here nor there. <laughs> because your goodness is always coming in comparing yourself with somebody or something, isn't it? How do you certify yourself, I am a good man? You look at this one, he's not okay, she's not okay, she's not okay, he's not okay, compared to all these people, I am a good man, isn't it? If you want to be really good, you have to make everybody in the world not okay. Please see, those people who think they are very good in their minds, nobody is okay, isn't it so? Have you noticed this? If nobody is okay in the world, it is not a question of goodness, it just means you are sick in your head. That's what it means. Yes or no? If nobody in the world is okay, what does it mean? 
you know, one of the things that your psychiatrist or psychologist will tell you is, if you start thinking everybody is not okay, that means you're heading for insanity. <laughs> yes? Because it is madness. And your goodness is just a kind of madness. Maybe it's needed to keep some balance in the society sometimes, but not for your evolution. Your morality will not involve you <coughs> if you begin to recognize life as life, then you will see, as life you respond to life and you don't need morals, you know how to be. You will never cross any lines because there are no lines, but at the same time, you are simply incapable of doing anything harmful, that's all. You are not holding back, you are not controlling because somebody told you this is the way you must be, you should not do that, you should not do this. The very way you are, there is no question of harm. It doesn't exist in you. Effortlessly, you can be good. Right now, with great difficulty, you're being good. <laughs> and if you're too good, even in heaven, they will reject you. Shariram suropam yathavakalatram Yashascharuchitram dhanam merutulyam Gururam vipadme manaschenalagnam Tatakim, 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 tatakim Kalatram dhanam purnam